thank God for all of you being here. Amen. Um, in, uh, we can see in 2015, we can see a whole lot of things going on. Um, but in spite of all the things that went on, we can look back and see how God has really blessed us. God has blessed us above many. We looked at many friends and many loved ones go home uh, to be with the Lord. And, uh, and yet, God is still blessing us. And not only is he not only blessing us, he's providing for us and protecting us. Uh, and we see all kind of inclement weather. Uh, but in spite of that, we've been victorious. I think all of us can say that we have much more than we had uh, many, many years ago. God has brought us from a mighty, mighty long way. But, but isn't it amazing how people, uh, when they think or they say they've made it, uh, how complacent they get. Uh, when we think that we have all the money we need, when we think that we have the house that we need, and the cars that we need, and the clothing that we need, um, it seems, and maybe it's not true, but it seems we stop praising God. We seek a lot of things to satisfy us. And I was watching some of the kids play on Christmas, and uh, you saw them, they had a, 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 a lot of toys to play with. And the one that the parents stayed out and searched for the most is the one that's the least played with. Because it only holds the entrance just for a little while. And I think some of us, because of victories in our life that God has allowed us to complete. Let me say that again. In 2015, some of us, some people, might get complacent because of what God has done for them. And the victories that you have achieved and won. But I'm here to warn you, don't get the big head. Amen. Because if it had not been for God, we don't know exactly where we would be. Are you with me here? Amen. The thing about it is that people will travel around the world chasing different things, seeing different things, uh, just to satisfy curiosity and desire and want. Some folk will travel all of the uh, Boudin has a special on CNN, where he travels all over the world, yeah. and he eats all kind of food. Yeah. And the thing about it is that you know it would be wonderful to have a job like that, to where you would eat different cuisine in different places, wake up, uh, live by the seashore, but it's one thing about him is that I don't really believe he knows the Lord. Amen. And so all of these places that he seeks, he's even been to Jerusalem, they just did one on Jerusalem, and all of that. Uh, he still says he had not found Christ. Sometimes we're looking in the wrong places Amen. for Christ. Sometimes I think we get complacent because we think that God has blessed us. Uh, as Pastor Flake, Pastor Philip would say, we've got, uh, we used to have two nickels we up together. And now we've got a dime over those two nickels and we get beside ourselves. And we don't want to serve him anymore. <clears throat> My, my thing for this year is that we've got to seek the Lord Amen. while we have the chance. We've got to continue to serve him. And an old guy told me one time, he says, if you start feeling lonely and you feel that God has departed from you, he said, look around and guess who moved. And what the Lord has got to be you. Now that movement might not be physically, but it could be spiritually. Amen. I don't come to mission like I should. I don't come to Sunday school like I should. I don't come to Bible study like I should. I don't come to church like I should. I've become complacent because God has blessed me right out of serving him. And so what I want to warn you about today is a man by the name of Asa, King Asa. If you will go with me to 2 Chronicles, the 15th chapter, and we will indulge in verses 1 through 7. King Asa. And I don't want you to be like Asa. 
Second Chronicles chapter 15, verses 1 through 7, signified by saying, Amen, when you reach that passage of Scripture again. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verses 1 through 7. Are you there? Okay, it reads on this wise, and the Spirit, reading according to the King James, and the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Obed. And he went out to meet Asa, and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin, the Lord is with you, while you be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Now for a long season, the Lord had been without a true God and without a teaching priest, and without law. But when they, in their troubles, did turn unto the Lord God of Israel, and sought him, he was found of them. And in those times there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in, came in but great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the country. And nation was destroyed of nation, and city of city. And God did vex them with all adversity. Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Amen. I'd like to talk to you from this thought. Don't be like Asa. Amen. Don't be like Asa. Amen. Asa was a good king, and he, he, uh, he started out the right way. He started out serving the Lord. Uh, he had the people to serve the Lord. Um, he was always in the temple. And here it is in chapter 14 and 15. You've got to read 14 to really get a, a good set on 15. They're coming back from war with the Ethiopians. And so Asa is coming back with a lot of spoil that, that they've gotten from the war, the gold, the silver, all of the treasures. And he's coming back. And along the way, he gets the big head. He decided, well, I got this victory. And he began to think that he got the victory all by himself. This is the warning thing. This is the warning shadow of the Bible. You can never get too big Amen. to try to make it by yourself. Amen. Whatever you are, whatever you do, God is the reason you have moved and have your being. Don't, don't ever think that you have gotten where you are by your own bootstrap. No man is an island within himself. And so whatever you have, whatever you achieve, whatever degree that you've got, you need to give God the glory. Amen. Not only that, whatever health and strength that you have, you need to give it to God. Amen. Now, in, in 2015, I know we, we made a lot of victories. We made a lot of achievements. We might have went through some heartaches and pain. But don't get beside yourself. And think because you paid off your house, it was all by your job and your working. Because if it had not been for God, you couldn't even have the job. So we need to understand that Asa is a king and he's coming back. And most of us, when we think we're king of the hill, we don't think anybody can hurt us. I've got men here and I've got different people and I've made a treaty with a heathen king. And that was one of his downfalls. That here he's serving the Lord. He's depending on the Lord, but something home is in this. The danger that he faced out in the wilderness in Ethiopia is not nothing compared to what he's got at home. And the problem that Asa's got at home is that he's dealing with idolatry. That they've got statues and they got little trinkets and they are going after other gods rather than the God who just gave him. The victory. So God sent a messenger to Asa yeah. on his way back. He said, you need to listen to me, man. Amen. What you just did wasn't because of your goodness. Right. Let, me, let me stop right here. Right. Because you are blessed and uh -huh. still here yeah. and have what you have don't mean you have a sin. Right. Maybe let me say that again. God blesses you yeah, yeah. because he loves you. Yeah. And God looks beyond our thoughts and see our needs. And that's what he did. But Asa, Asa, you started out with me. But guess what? You are teaching uh, people, and that's a dangerous thing, is false teaching somebody to follow after the God. Amen. I think, I think, uh, 
think in, in 2016 we ought to really watch ourselves because we go we get so caught up on stuff and materialistic things that we can become like Asa. We think that we can wave our hands and people are supposed to jump. We can speak and folks are supposed to follow our lead. God, if you're a leader, guess what? God makes kings. Amen. It's just like checkers. You know, a lot of times we say, make me a king. Sometimes God makes a king just like he did with Saul. You don't need a king. But I'm going to make you a king. You really don't need a king because he's not going to treat you right. You need to stay with me. You know, some folk would rather have an adulterer king. Amen. Someone sitting on a shelf. Amen. They can't talk to you. Amen. They can't tell you what you're doing wrong. Now here it is that Asa knows the Lord. He's got where, he got, where his position is. It's with God Almighty. Yet he decides to go astray. I think that's what a lot of men have done today. Amen. That they started walking with the Lord, they raised with the Lord, but now they began to doubt because of the word. We've Amen. never heard of so many mass shootings and killings all over the place. People are obsessed with guns. Guns are not the answer. Love is the answer. Amen. We need to understand that, that we try to tell men how to handle things. Handle it God's way. No, don't, I'm not trying to fool you. Even when you're doing it God's way, don't guarantee you're going to make it home. Amen. But I'd rather die doing it God's way Amen. than trying to do it my way. Asa is hard-headed because he does not listen uh, to uh, the messenger of God. Uh, and he does not. He sends a hand and eye uh, to be that prophet. This is a terrible time during Asa's lifetime because if you read in the text, there was no preaching ministry going on. Amen. They didn't have the word of the Lord. Yeah. Uh, they had not heard from God. Yeah. Uh, in our experience, have you ever been without the Holy Ghost? Oh, yeah, we have. Mm. When we curse somebody out, we don't have the Holy Ghost. Yes, the Holy Ghost. When you think bad of somebody, the Holy Ghost is not with you. Yeah. Uh, uh, when you make a bad try, the Holy Ghost is yeah. not with you. You need to understand that uh, when you grieve that, you can do a whole lot of things. But when the Holy Ghost is with you, you're not going to do certain things. So we need to understand that Asa uh, is saying, look here, uh, we can make it. I'm going to lead you. Tell you what, let's just hold up this out. Now I'm using my own fingers. We, we got this carved image. And uh, we're going to worship it. No, no, no. That's not going to do it. Uh, we've got treasures here. Wrap yourself in treasure. Yeah. No, we can't do that because treasures can't help you. That's right. Only a God, a true God, a living God can help you. Um, some folk cannot stand it, Sister Bro, when they miss a week of church. Amen. Seven days, catch this now, seven days without church makes one week. Amen. So a lot of times we miss. Folk cannot stand to miss church. I know when my, me and my family are somewhere, we go to different churches, but it's nothing like church at home. It's nothing like being there and being with people that you love and that pray for you daily. It's just something about it. So here it is that Asa is dealing in a period where there are no preachers. It says, it says no preaching ministry. So they don't have anybody. Guess what? Because God says, I'm not going to send anybody because they're not listening to anybody. Amen. Hello, lights. Amen. Now, it's also something in this text. And I'm not trying to build myself up. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Amen. But you got to watch how you reject the minister who brings the word. Amen. Because you're not rejecting the minister. You're rejecting Amen. God's word. Uh, Asa got into trouble by rejecting the Lord's message. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm king. Last time I looked on the block, I'm king. Honey, I don't care how big you get. Your arms are too short to match with God. You cannot do it. And so Asa finds this out. So let's, let's, let's see what Asa... Asa is a sad example of a man who made a splendid beginning 
and had a tragic end. I, I remember some folks when they come down, the thing about it is they hit the ground running. Uh, the Holy Ghost got me. We hit me in the top of my head yeah. and went all the way down at my feet. You see them for one month and for three years. They're missing an action. Something is amiss with that. But here Asa figured that I've been king for 36 years. And I can do what I want to do. That's where the mistakes are. Amen. Because I don't care where you get and how long you hold a position. I don't care how long you've been here. God is still on the throne. Amen. God is still in charge. Amen. And through mercy and his grace, Amen. he's allowing us to stay here. Amen. And so we need to understand that Asa is a man who started out right with God, but he ended up wrong. Uh, early in his ministry, he relied on God. God uh, gave him a great victory, and then uh, he believed the prophet's message and removed the idols from the place. Now hear what he's doing. The thing is that after I get the message from God that he's not playing with me, God don't play. Amen. He's not playing with me. I'm going to take it for seriousness that God is going to kill me if I don't straighten things up. Amen. And so when he makes a move to straighten things up, See, when you get out of hand and make a mess, it's hard to clean it up sometimes. Amen. See, that, that's what God told David. David, you still a man after my heart, but there's going to be a sword in your house uh -huh. now until your death. Yeah. Simply because some of the folk that you mess with is still angry with you. Yeah. And that's why he had to run. He had one of his sons kill another one. Uh, here they chasing David. He had to hide. A sword, a daughter was raped, Tamara. We have to understand that when God says something's going to happen, it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And so here it is that uh, if you see God, the text says, uh, you'll find him. Yeah. Uh, the reason why some folk can't find God, they're not even seeking at all. Yeah. They're not trying to look for him. Because guess why? They want to be like Asa was in that time. I don't want to listen to nobody. Nobody can tell me anything. I'm just going to have my own religion. It ain't going to work. The thing is that we have to understand that idols can't hold you. Amen. Idols can't talk to you. Yes. You have to understand that only a true God oh, yes. can talk to you late in the midnight hour yes. when pains are running up and down your legs or running across your chest or you've got a headache and don't know where it's coming from. Only a true God yes. can give you comfort and sleep yes. in the midnight hour. And they don't have to be in the midnight hour. It can be up during the day. Amen. God is real, and he will talk to you if you talk to him. Amen. He talks to us through the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so the thing about it is that Asa says, well, I better get myself in order. There's another pen drop. In order for you to get somebody else straight, you got to be straight. Amen. Asa says, I'm going to work on myself and get myself back in order, and then I'm going to Appeal to the people to let's go back to God. Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed that when you're walking with God, everything goes well? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say you might not have a little hiccup here or there. But when you're walking with God, number one, you might go through some storms, but you're always protected. Yeah. And you need to understand that Asa says, well, I need to uh, go back to the Lord. In 2016, just tell somebody, go back to the Lord. Amen. Go back to him 100%, not just half of it, because, you know, we can half do things. We can half pray. Uh, we can half uh, serve him, but serve him with a whole heart. Amen. And it says in the text that he will bless you. Whatever work you're trying to do, God will bless you with that. He says, I'm going to reward you. Now, you have to understand the reward might not be here. It might be when we get to glory. Yeah, that's where our rewards are really going to be. Uh, everything that can be given us here, degrees, plats, uh, diplomas, that stuff's going to be blown up. It's going to be burned up. But when we've got the Holy Ghost power, Amen. and we've got Jesus for our Lord and Savior, we don't have to worry about anything. So, so here Asa says, now Asa has messed up, but he's got the sense of mind to clean things up. But I don't want you to make the mistake. I don't want you to get to where... Uh, Asa was because Asa was dealing in dangerous territory Amen. where God could have let him die in battle. Mm -hmm. But he brought him out to show him his erring ways. Oh, yeah. And so here it is is that uh, uh, he decided
that he would call on the people, allegiance to God once more, and they all found out they were going to serve God. But, but look at this. The queen decided to say, well, you, everybody else can go back to God. But I love my house. I love my rabbit food. I, I love my food. I, I'm not going to go back to that. You have to understand that when a man is afraid of God, he will make corrections that's not only good for him, but for everybody. Amen. See, God, God had not told him, say, look, you need to get all of these idols out of here. And you know how we are sometimes. We'll get rid of some of them. Amen. But we hold two of them back. Amen. Hello, Naaman. Hello, Naaman. The thing is that we have to understand that God wants them all out. And so the queen decided, I'm going to keep mine. And so in order to save himself and the people, he had the queen deposed. Let me help you here. He, she wasn't queen anymore. Amen. So he deposed her. He demoted her. Every now and then, when we're going up and we're trying to do things for God, we've got to depose some folks. Amen. We've got to eject some folk. Amen. Because everybody that's walking with you is not going to listen to what you say. That's dead weight. And we need to get rid of those folk who will not adhere to what the man of God or the word of God is saying. And so this is what happened to the queen, but he did right by deposing her. You're not going to get rid of the idols, I'm going to get rid of you. You can't be in the palace. When you depose, you lose your place. You have to understand that God will depose you. Hey, Samson. Amen. What you shaking for? I'm the one gave you the power. Amen. You shaking for nothing. Because all your power is gone. Why? Because you were acting foolish. And you're marrying different women that you're not supposed to be married. The thing about it is that you don't marry a Philistine woman. Why are you doing that? Well, I'm blessing you. And then you tell her the secret that I told you don't do to cut the hair off. And so the thing about it is that, you know, he told her the secret. And then uh, when they caught him and tied him up, then he was shaking for nothing. God had deposed him. Let me help some of you. Depose means fire. God had fired him. And he had no power. But look how he got it back. To the captain, he started praying to God and asking him for just strength for one more time that he would be able to pull the pillars down and fight the battle for God. He died by pulling the pillars down. It's hard to try to live without the Holy Ghost. And if we are a mess with God, guess what? Holy Ghost is not with us. And so we need to understand that God is an awesome God. God says that uh, if if you're going to if you're going to call on me if you're really going to depend on me you got to really love me. Amen. And the thing about it is that rather than having an adultery type uh, uh, idol god or something like that, uh, you've got to be equally yoked. You've got to have somebody that knows the law. Amen. You've got to have somebody that loves Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so here it is that he was saying that I'm, I'm going to depose you. I'm going to fire you. Because idols are dangerous things. I'm almost through with this. He had been king for 36 years. Stop relying on God. Don't stop relying on God. Don't make the mistakes that he did. Uh, because so goes the leader, so goes the people. You don't want to be a stumbling block for people along the way. You don't want to be a false teacher. And I'm not just talking about teaching out of the Bible. I'm talking about living a false life. Amen. That's false teaching. If you profess to be a Christian and you're living unworthy of that title, God is going to hold you responsible for that. Because there's somebody down the road looking at you walking in church every Sunday morning. And you're not living the life. You're a stumbling block. The thing about it is he stopped relying on God. And that's what a lot of people do. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Amen. And the key to it is that if you can't see his hand, trust his heart. Amen. He'll be right there. A lot of times we can't see God working. Uh, for those who have been diagnosed with cancer, God is working for you. You can't see it all the time. 
but you can feel it when the doctor says you're in remission now. You, you've got this thing beat. You need to understand for those of us who have issues, and all of us got issues. Amen. We all got some kind of problem. If we don't have any problem, we won't get some problem. All you got to do is just keep saying good morning. Amen. And so the thing about it is that we have to understand that a lot of people will throw up their hands. Don't throw up your hands. If you throw your hands up, throw them like this Amen. and start praying to an everlasting God. The thing about it is that one other thing that uh, before he got right, Asa took the lost treasures and misused them because he was king. Whatever God gives you, glorify God with it. Amen. If God gives you a house, glorify him with that house. If God gives you a car, glorify God with that car. If God gives you some money, Glorify God with his part. All he's asking for his part. He's not asking you to give any more. But he says you ought to give what's his. Amen. And so we need to bless God. All of this goes with blessing God. The thing about it is that some people will take God's, take his part, mm -hmm. and buy other stuff with it. And that's how we get away from God. The thing about it is that we have to understand that Asa, the reason why he messed up, he had the message. But he got angry. And it's bad to get angry. Because we do and say some things that we really don't mean. And we don't follow instruction. Nobody can talk to us. And so we need to understand that God is watching all of us who profess to be Christians along the way. So he says, he says, you need to correct what's wrong. You need to stop having folk. Uh, do things for you that you know are wrong just because you're a king. Um, Asa and the people were no longer loyal to the Lord. And I think that that's what's wrong with the world today is that they stopped being loyal to an almighty God. I, I never thought that I would see the time that you couldn't walk in a courthouse and mention the name of Jesus. I, 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 I'm, I'm confused because they swear you in with the Bible, but you can't keep it in the room. Something, something's wrong. That's messed up. I, you, you can't tell me that uh, we can only pray when disaster comes. Why not pray before disaster comes? Why not pray for people as a whole and the world for a whole? But when, when, when terror strikes, it's okay to pray in school. It's okay to pray in the, in the White House and the, the other houses. Um, you know, everybody wants to pray. You need to understand that prayer is in order every day. Amen. And in order for us to get it straight, we've got to read the words of God. Now here, he got a chance to try to get things right with God. Here are the points that I want you to remember out of this. Number one, the whole text, chapter 14 and 15, is talking about seeking God. Amen. Seeking him while he can be found. Amen. That's what you need to do. You need to seek him, and you don't have to go to Europe. You don't have to go all over the world. Amen. You can stay right there in your room and talk to God like a natural man. Amen. So seek him and let other folk know that you found him. Uh, God does answer prayer. Amen. Because here it is, the people decided, well, we better get right. If Asa's going to be right, then we need to get right. And so here it is, God answers prayers. We know that he answers prayers because he blessed them. And he told them, as long as you're with me, guess what, I'll be with you. God will never leave you nor forsake you. Here, here is the number one kicker. you got to trust him. Now, God may take you through a whole lot of battles in 2016. He might bring you through some trials and tribulation in 2016, but stay with it. Amen. But my grandmother used to say, whenever you go to a dance, don't come back with home and somebody different. You make sure you come back with the person who brought you to the dance. Amen. Jesus Amen. has brought you to the dance Amen. in 2015 Amen. and 16. So make sure you go home with it. Yeah. Never leave home without it. As the old man say, he's better than Master Call. Uh, he he need to you need to understand that God is. He said you need to trust him, and he says God reward, rewards faithfulness and those who obey him. God re 
rewards those who are faithful and who obey him. He says, if you stay with God, he'll stay with you. Don't move. Don't give up. Because God is an awesome God. Don't make the mistakes that Asa made. But if you do, be smart enough to eventually listen to the word of God. That's what keeps us right. That's what will get us right and make us live right. Only the word of God. So don't get caught up on all this materialistic stuff that God has given us. It is for uh, us to, uh, to exist and, and move and have our means and help our families. There's nothing to hoard because you can't take it with you. Asa decided that I'm going to get things right. He says, I'm going to have to go back and be faithful to the Lord. I'm going back to the old landmark. I'm going back to the one who's my lily of the valley. I'm going back to the one who's my prince of peace. I'm going back to the one who's my shepherd that walks with me everywhere I go. I'm going back to the one who's my wheel in the middle of the wheel. I'm, I'm going back to the one uh, that gives me water that I don't thirst anymore. I, I'm going back to the one that when trials and tribulations are all around and storm clouds are on the horizon, I'm going back to the one that will wrap me in the arms of his love. That will hide me in the pavilion of his love until the storm passes over. Can't no statue do that for you. You need to understand that God is an awesome God. And that was a song one time said, he'll walk with you and talk with you all along the way. All along life. So I don't want you to be like Asa. I don't want you to mess up. But guess what? If you mess up, God can clean you. You're looking at a miracle. Because whoever thought I'd be standing behind God's pulpit, but he's a miracle worker. He can take all type of chemistry. The girl said that one, one saying that I just can't understand how a cow can eat green grass. A brown cow can eat green grass and produce white milk. But I got one better for you. I can't understand how red blood that flows from Calvary's head can wash me whiter than snow. I, I, I got to ask you about that. No tide can do it. No bleach can do it. Only the blood of Jesus the Christ. I, I couldn't make it without it, Tyler. I, I don't know how full try to make it without it. Because one other thing is that he's my friend. I can go to him. They are not. And that man says, as I come to the Lord in the morning, while the dew is still on the roses, the voice I hear falling on my ear. You need to understand that God will listen to you. If you listen to him, he'll talk to you. If you talk to him, isn't it good to talk to the Lord? And you don't have to—you don't have to be in a certain place to talk to the Lord. You—you you can be in your house. You can be on your job. When they messing with you on your job, just tell God all about it in your upper room. We need to understand that we're not here to stay. We're on our way home. But while we're here, God is demanding something from us. And that is to be obedient to his will and his will. May God bless you and keep you. For one of these days, the county, we're going to look up and we're going to see God's face. We're going to live with him. This world that we know won't be here anymore. We need to understand that God is going to call all of us. If we know him. If we believe in him, if we have a relationship with him, we'll see him on the other side. God bless you.